हेलो एंड वेलकम यू रन टू द पॉलिटी प्राइम सीरीज ऑफ जस्ट आईएएस माय नेम इज प्रज्ञा इन टुडेस इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड ऑफ पॉलिटी प्राइम वी आर गोइंग टू स्टडी अबाउट another significant constitutional amendment which completely overhauled the face of our indian constitution and yes you are guessing it right i am talking about the 42nd constitutional amendment act in this discussion we are firstly going to see what was the 42nd constitutional amendment and why is it highly debated even today why is it so significant in nature then we are also going to analyze the historical background which led to the passing of this amendment then we are also going to study about the key provisions that have been introduced in our indian constitution through this amendment and lastly we will be seeing a conclusion and some of the important practice question from the perspective of your prelims examination so if i talk about this 42nd constitutional amendment act it was enacted during the period of in emergency enacted during the period of emergency and it made very significant changes in the indian constitution so much so that this amendment in itself is known as the mini constitution of india this amendment act amended the preamble to the constitution 40 articles and the seventh schedule and added 14 new articles and two new parts to the constitution of india so basically it this amendment act shifted the power shifted the power to the executive to the executive and away from legislature and judiciary so after this amendment act was enacted the central government supremacy became even more uh, firm in the indian constitution and that was the main purpose behind the enactment of the 42nd constitutional amendment act now if we try to understand the historical background behind this amendment we have been discussing the 38th constitutional amendment act we have discussed the 39th constitutional amendment act so basically we know what was the historical aspect at that point of time there was an ongoing tussle between the judiciary and the parliament at that point of time then there was the evolution of the basic structure doctrine and the then parliament of india was not really happy with the basic structure doctrine okay it was irked by the basic structure doctrine and this was the first time when we saw the that super session of judges happen super session of judges happen so after this judgment three senior most uh, judges of the supreme court were superseded by justice a n ray justice a n ray and he was made the chief justice of india so previously the appointment of chief justice of india used to happen on seniority but this was the very first time that the convention on seniority was broken and justice a n ray was made the chief justice of india because the government at that point of time was not in the favor of the basic structure doctrine they considered that they had absolute power to amend any part in the indian constitution then came the indra gandhi versus raj narain case another turning point in the history of india okay in this case as we have discussed that article 329 clause a article 329 clause a was declared as unconstitutional by the honorable supreme court of india and this was another blow to the government at that point of time then the attempt to have the keshavan and bharti decision reviewed by another bench initiated on november 10 1975 two had failed because the lawyers were arguing that how can you constitute a bench when we have not filed the review petition how can you reconsider the judgment without a review petition and that is why that bench a special bench that was formed by justice a n ray to reconsider the Uh, judgment in the keshavanand bharti case in which the basic structure doctrine was evolved by the honorable supreme court of india finally failed that bench had to be dismantled and all of this led to the enactment of the 42nd constitutional amendment act of india moving forward
let us analyze the key provisions that have been introduced in our Indian constitution through this amendment. So, firstly, in the case of preamble, so the first, the categorization of India as a sovereign democratic republic has been changed to sovereign socialist secular democratic republic. So, basically, the words socialist and secular were added to the Indian preamble by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. And this is also in challenge before the Honorable Supreme Court of India as of now. And we have discussed this in detail in our Polity Primer series. You can watch that video to know more about the controversy. Okay. Secondly, the words unity of the nation in the clause in the preamble explaining fraternity were changed to unity and integrity of the nation. This change was made to lay emphasis on indivisibility of the country along with the unity of the nation because India always talks about unity in diversity. Unity in diversity. So, this phrase unity in diversity was explex, made explicit by including this word unity and integrity of the nation because we were already a victim of the colonial rule and we wanted to have this say that no, you cannot interfere in our internal sovereign matters. Moving forward to the directive principles of state policy. We were discussing that yes, the government was trying to have some social reforms. Social reforms. And this was being done by the first constitutional amendment act itself. In fact, they were trying to uh, have precedence of directive principles of state policy over the fundamental right. And this was also a point of tussle between the government of India at that point of time and Honorable Supreme Court of India. So, basically three new directive principles of state policy were added to the existing li list of uh, DPSPs and one DPSP was also amended through the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. So, the first one is to secure opportunities for the healthy development of children, Article 39. Second, to promote equal justice and to provide free legal aid to the poor, Article 39 Clause A. To take steps to secure the participation of workers in the management of industries, Article 43 Clause A. And to protect and improve the environment and to safeguard forests and wildlife, Article 48 Clause A. So, all of these directive principles of state policy were added in the Indian Constitution for the very first time by the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act. Moving forward to the fundamental rights. So, as I have explained to you in my previous sessions also and as I am explaining to you now also that yes, the government at that point of time were taking undertaking heavy social reforms. So, fundamental rights were in question and they said that yes, we can amend the fundamental rights. We can cur curtail the fundamental rights to promote public good, to promote the directive principles of state policy. But they were being debarred by Article 37. Why? Because it explicitly mentions that the directive principles are non-justiciable in nature. So, to give directive principles of state policy a precedent over fundamental rights, Article 31 Clause C was introduced, which explicitly said that in case of public good, the fundament, directive principles of state policy will prevail over the fundamental rights. Okay. A new provision, Article 31 Clause D, was added to enable parliament to make a law to prevent or prohibit anti-national activities or the formation of anti-national associations. So, this was also a very significant article that was added in the fundamental rights. And if you were found indulging in anti-social activities, anti-national activities, and if you are found, you know, forming groups of uh, anti-national activities, then definitely your fundamental rights could be curtailed. Then it also allowed the suspension of efforts during the emergency. And this is explicitly mentioned under Article 358 and Article 359 of our Indian Constitution. Article 358 talks about the suspension of Article 19. Suspension of Article 19 during the 
emergency period and article 359 talks about the suspension of all efforts suspension of all efforts except article 20 and 21 so these modifications were made to the fundamental rights in our indian constitution moving forward to the fundamental duties so for the very first time this constitutional amendment act introduced to the indians the concept of a fundamental right because the government believed in a, having a welfare state okay so you have a fundamental right so you have a corresponding fundamental duty towards your nation also so part 4a was constituted which contained fundamental duties under article 51 of the constitution of india presently there are 11 fundamental duties enlisted in the constitution of india but through 42nd amendment act only 10 duties were added let me know in the comment box below when and by which amendment the 11th fundamental duty was added in the indian constitution moving forward to the changes in the parliament and state legislatures as i have explained the purpose was to establish the firm authority of the central government firm authority of the central government okay so various changes were made were made in the operation of the parliament and state legislatures so basically it raised the term of lok sabha and vidhan sabha from 5 to 6 years the quorum was left to be fixed by the rules of each house so basically it did away with the demand of quorum did away of quorum in the houses and it also froze the seats in the lok sabha and state legislative assemblies on the basis of 1971 census till 2000 year 2001 so basically it put a delimitation on the seats delimitation on the seats okay moving forward to the executive so the amendment stated that president shall act in accordance to the aid and advice of the council of ministers so basically it changed article 74 of our indian constitution previously also in our indian constitution there were no discretionary powers in the hand of the president of india but this was made actually explicit by this constitutional amendment act by bringing a change in article 74 of our indian constitution and now the president was bound by the aid and advice of the council of ministers then federalism enabled the center to deploy armed forces for dealing with situation of law and order in any state so basically it shifted the structure of the indian constitution structure of the constitution of india to unitary centralized from quasi federal in nature so basically it tried to make the indian constitution more unitary in nature moving forward shifted five subjects from state list to the concurrent list that is education forest protection of wild animals and birds weights and measures and administration of justice constitution and organization of all courts except the supreme court and the high courts and this was going to be very evident because there was an ongoing tussle between the parliament of india and the courts in india so basically the parliament of india wanted to reduce the interference by the courts reduce the interference by the courts especially the high court because of the decision of the allahabad high court in the case of raj narain versus indira gandhi moving forward to the judiciary so under article 226 clause a and article 228 clause a this amendment allowed high courts only to adjust the validity of state legislation previously you could file a case in the high court for adjudging the central legislation as well central legislation as well 
but this power of the high court was clipped by this constitutional amendment and now they can only adjudge and pronounce judgments on the state legislations similarly article 131 clause a was added to the empower the supreme court only to look into the validity of any central legislation and this was specifically done to weaken the indian judiciary because they did not want the indian judiciary to have any kind of jurisdiction over the election dispute and central legislations election disputes and central legislation especially the socio economic legislations that the parliament at that point of time was enacting apart from these alteration another controversial change was brought in the realm of judicial power by inducting article 144 clause a and article 1228 clause a into the indian constitution apart from this this amendment also talked about the formation of administrative tribunals under articles 323 clause a and 323 clause b it also talked about the formation of all india judicial services moving forward to the emergency provisions so basically this amendment authorized the president to declare emergency in a part of the country so it was not necessary for the president to declare emergency in the whole country of india it could declare an emergency on the part of the country as well and it extended the one time duration of the president's rule in a state from 6 months to 1 year so these were some huge changes made in the declaration of the emergency in the country moving forward to the civil services so till 1976 under article 311 clause 2 a government servant could not be dismissed removed or reduced in rank without being given a reasonable opportunity of being heard because every person in india has a right to fair trial right to fair trial right to be heard that is audi ultram partem and these are all the principles of natural justice principles of natural justice okay so these are all are the part of the principles of natural justice but after this amendment first at the time of inquiry into the charges against him he can be heard secondly when after the inquiry it was proposed to impose any kind of the aforesaid punishments on him he would have a right to be heard he would have a right to have free and fair trial and this was involved in the and this is known as the principles of natural justice but the 42nd amendment amended article 311 clause 2 so as to eliminate the second stage that is when after inquiry it was proposed to impose any of the aforesaid punishments he will not be heard any of the punishments can be imposed on him if he is found guilty without hearing him so this was a major change that was made by the 42nd constitutional amendment act moving forward to the amendment of the constitution so the 42nd amendment act made some modifications in article 368 two new clauses that is article 368 clause 4 and 5 were added to the indian constitution because the parliament wanted to establish its supremacy over the amending power of the indian constitution they wanted to remove the power of judicial review judicial scrutiny etc they considered that yes now we are supreme and we can amend any part of the indian constitution including the fundamental rights so basically clause 4 sought to provide that no amendment to the constitution shall be called in question in any court on any ground so basically this finished the power of judicial review of the indian courts then clause 5 declared for removal of doubts that there shall be no limitation on the constituent power of the parliament to amend the 
कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन एंड दिस इज वॉट आई एम ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लेन टू यू डेट ये दिस कंप्लीटली फॉर्मली स्टैब्लिश द सुप्रीमेसी ऑफ द सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट ऑन द अमेंडमेंट ऑफ द इंडियन कॉन्स्टिट्यूशन मूविंग फॉरवर्ड to the conclusion of our today's discussion we have discussed what led to the enactment of the 42nd constitutional amendment act we have also seen that it brought so many changes in our indian constitution that it is called as the mini constitution of india and it can be concluded that for people started questioning this amendment act there was high debates that were going on after the enactment of this constitutional amendment act and people started questioning this amendment and the Indi india's constitution okay they said that whether it is india's constitution or whether it is indra's constitution okay so the people started uh, you know revolting against the the changes proposed by the 42nd constitutional amendment act they started questioning that whether it is our constitution because the preamble starts from we the people of india and they started question that uh, questioning that whether it is indra's constitution this constitutional amendment act was very controversial and debatable this also teaches us that yes power corrupts but absolute power corrupts absolutely okay so in conclusion i would like to mention the words of american historian of the indian constitution granville austin and granville austin is a very established name in the field of constitutional law the important constitutional development of the emergency other than its very imposition was the enactment of the 42nd amendment coming in november 1976 the amendment demonstrate the progression of the prime minister and her government from having near absolute power without a coherent program other than the protection of her prime ministry to power expressed through fundamental constitutional change so this is what i am saying that yes this constitutional amendment act actually taught us that yes power corrupts but absolute power corrupts absolutely and no one wants to lose the par in their hand so with this we come to a conclusion of our today's discussion now let us discuss the question which i asked you in the previous session so the question was article 329a was added to the indian constitution by which amendment your options were option a was 38th amendment option b was 39th amendment option c was 42nd amendment and option d was none of the above so your correct answer is going to be option b 39th constitutional amendment now let us discuss the practice questions of our today's session so the question is consider the following statements with reference to the 42nd amendment act of 1976 statement 1 it amended article 74 to state explicitly that president shall act in accordance with the advice of the council of ministers statement number 2 the act authorizes the pre uh, president to proclaim a proclaim an emergency in any part of the country statement number 3 it reduced the life of lok sabha and state legislative assemblies again to 5 years and thus restore the status quo ante so which of the statements given above is are correct your option a is one only your option b is one and two only your option c is two and three only and your option d is one two and three so the correct answer is going to be option b statement 1 and statement 2 only are correct because this increased the life of lok sabha and the state legislative assemblies from 5 years to 6 years now let us discuss the last question of our today's discussion so the question is which constitutional amendment added fundamental duties to the indian constitution your options are option a is 41st constitutional amendment your option b is 42nd constitutional amendment your option c is 44th constitutional amendment and option d is none of the above and this answer will be given by you to me in the comment box below and i'll reveal the, the correct answer in my next session i hope this session was insightful for you if you have any feedback regarding this session kindly drop it in the comment box below if you like the today's discussion and found it to be helpful kindly like the video and subscribe to our channel for more such interesting updates thank you for more informative content like share and subscribe and do not forget to press the bell icon to get the notifications